Hello, I'm Alex, and I've been drawing ever since I was a kid. Honestly, ever since I can remember, I've been drawing. And today, I will take you by your hand, Nomo, and walk you through your very first anime-style step-by-step drawing. So that by the end of this video, you will have something like this. All you need are a few cheap pieces of paper. Any old printer paper is gonna do the job here. Then we need a pencil. Any pencil. Stay here. Any pencil is gonna do the job. There are differences between pencils, but this is nothing to worry about in the beginning. And a eraser. And it can be an eraser like that, like that, like that, or even a fancy knitted eraser. I never used this one. Okay, and to make this entire process even easier, I decided to break it up in three stages. Stage number one is gonna be the rough shape of the hand. Stage number two is gonna be the guidelines. In case you don't know what guidelines are, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's lines that help you place certain things like eyes and ears and all the other stuff. You can use guidelines for anything and every expert, every pro is doing it. So you should as well. And now stage three. This is gonna be the details and the cleanup. Easy. So let's start. Okay, and now we're gonna start really basic and simple, and that's with a circle. And don't worry if your circle isn't looking like mine. In fact, it won't look like mine if you're being realistic. It might look something more like this. Or like this and I just hope to God it doesn't look like this in case you have a, a wiggly line like that you just have to correct it yourself a little bit use a circle a real circle as a reference don't be afraid to do that and if your circle looks a bit more like that just clean it up a bit like I'm doing right now even with this relatively clean circle it still makes sense to just take your time with this step Right now, we're going to lay down the very basic shapes. And if the foundation is wacky, then trust me, no detail or amount of work at the end of it will be able to fix it. And now, as you can see, the next thing we're gonna do is search the middle of the circle and then to add some spice, because we don't want our character facing directly at us. We're gonna shift the line slightly to the left, and instead of just doing the line straight down, we're gonna give it an angle. So it, again, just has some spice. To know how far you should go down and extend the line, we're simply gonna take half of the circle, and then, because we're drawing a girl and a cute animal girl at that, we're gonna shorten that line for about half of it. Maybe leave it a little bit longer. Because, first of all, the chins of women are usually not that long. And we also are gonna give our face a more rounded shape with that to, again, just make it appear cuter. The next thing we're gonna do, as you can already see, is putting the shape, the general shape of our jaw or the outline of our head. Here, there isn't an exact rule since it is different from person to person, but in our case, since our character first of all isn't looking straight at us, we're gonna have the bump on the height of the cheekbone on the left side and the shape of our jaw on the right side. And don't be afraid to make it a bit more roundish than it might actually be in real life. After all, we're drawing anime, and anime is a heavily stylized style. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is draw our neck. In that case, again, we want to go pretty thin, since, again, we're drawing a woman here, and women usually aren't that masculine, so the necks are smaller. And the next step is gonna be a guideline for the icon, for the highlight of this piece. And 
those are the eyes. To get a basic idea where the eyes belong, you first have to draw a line, which is roughly the middle of your head. On any step, when saying half of anything, don't be afraid to use a ruler. This is gonna be your first artwork. There's no way you're gonna have the feeling and accuracy to find roughly the middle. And then we're gonna draw circles, equally big, which are gonna be exactly in the middle of the halves, which you previously separated with our guideline that goes through the middle of the face. And now on to the nose. And this is gonna be the simplest nose you've ever gonna see. Uh, from the distance to the upper end of our eye, all the way to the chin. And on the halfway point there is our nose. And instead of drawing anything fancy, you're simply gonna make a point there. And that's it, move on. And the next thing you're gonna do is again, take half of the distance between the nose and the chin and this is where we're gonna draw our mouth. And this mouth is also very, very simple. We're simply gonna have a shape that's akin to a stretch W. Now the next thing we're gonna do is draw the ear. And in our case, since our character isn't looking straight at us, but actually at an angle, we're not gonna have to draw one. Perfect. And how do we know where to put our ear? Well, there are two ways. And you can actually use both to correct yourself in case you made an error with the first one. And that is to start the ear on the right side of our eye guideline and to end the ear about the height of our nose. If you look at it from the side view, it's always about on the same height. Okay, and now we're gonna draw in our eyebrows, which we're also gonna keep fairly simple, with simply two lines. Now, eyebrows are something that's always gonna be very or heavily dependent on the mood or the emotions that the subject is supposed to show. If they angle downwards, they are conveying anger, if they are angled downwards, they're conveying sadness. Now the next thing we're gonna do is draw in the hairline or a guideline for the future hairline. And to find about out where the hairline is roughly gonna be, we're gonna use half the distance from the upper end of our eye guidelines all the way to the end of our head guideline. And Roughly there, maybe a bit higher above that point, we're gonna draw in our hairline. Now, the hairline is also something that's always gonna be a bit different, since hairline is also a great tool to convey the age of a character. After all, a toddler barely have any hair. An adult is probably gonna have full hair, and again, an old man probably isn't gonna have that many hairs. And now, we're gonna make one of the most important guidelines when it comes to our hair afterwards. And this is our origin point, or in that case, origin line. Which, this origin line is something you can see in basically all hairstyles. It's basically the point or the line which every hair strand is gonna originate from. If it doesn't make much sense right now, don't worry, we're gonna get more specific afterwards. Now, the next thing, as I'm sure you have noticed by now, is that I'm still correcting myself. You might not, especially as someone who never drawn, you might not necessarily see those mistakes. But, in case you ever see some mistakes, you really should fix them, as I said previously. A weak foundation and a wacky foundation is only gonna end up with a wacky result. So. Spend time. It doesn't matter if you need an hour. It doesn't matter if you need two or three hours. Just don't stress it. Especially at the beginning, there is no need to stress it. Learning art takes time. And now, the next thing, the third stage of our three stages is gonna be 
my favorite part, and those are the details. We now have the foundation laid out, and now the only thing left to do is bring our piece to life. Starting with the hair. But before we're actually gonna work with that, we're first gonna change or spice up our hairline. Because look at it, it's a line. That's not thrilling, that's not spicy enough. We're gonna make it a bit more interesting to look at. And that's really hella simple with a zigzag. Not too far apart, apart, but also not too close. Again, this is basically a feel thing, which you're gonna develop over time. Now, there's not much more to say right here. Honestly, I'd rather you just take my piece as a reference and just follow along. However, there are a few tips on how you can make hair seem more flowy and actually seem natural. Because trust me, I've been there. Many characters look like they are balding, balding, despite doing everything the guy in the tutorial said. Now, that's again practice, but again, there are a few tips and tricks that might help you. And that's to draw the lines fairly quickly, quickly and in one fluid motion. This is something that's also going to be very important. Now this one fluid motion, as we previously mentioned with our circle at the very beginning, isn't going to be perfect. But that's something you have to practice. But don't worry, you will get there in time. Now, as I'm sure you have also noticed right now, I erased a lot. Something I feel you don't often see in the tutorials that they're correcting themselves while making the tutorial. But I do think, first of all, I was too lazy to draw this over and over and over and over again 10 times just to make it perfect for this one video. But also, it's I think it's also important that you see that even someone who you might consider is really, really good at art isn't gonna make anything perfect on the first try. There's gonna be a lot of error. If you do something and you see it doesn't look right, or it doesn't look the way you want to, feel f you should, not just feel free, you should actually maybe erase it. Schnee zu Hause ist, fühlen wir uns frei. Wir sind die Generation Winter. Bis bald im Obertauern. Unser Kallax-Regal mit dem simplen und wandlungsfähigen Design macht es seiner Tod Björklund besonders stolz. Und der neue gesenkte Preis macht uns bei Ikea besonders stolz. And now to spice our hairstyle up even more, we're gonna add a little ribbon. And I think by now everyone is gonna be able to tell that this face is heavily inspired by Nesuko. However, I didn't quite want to draw Nesuko one to one, since she often, she often has this bamboo thingy in front of her mouth. And I did want to draw the mouth in this tutorial, so you could actually go ahead and draw more faces after watching this tutorial.
now that our hair is finished comes the highlight, our eyes. And to make sure our eyes are gonna be symmetrical, we're gonna work on one thing on the right side or the left side and then immediately do the same thing on the left side. We're not gonna draw one eye and then the next one, but we're gonna draw them both simultaneously. And if you paid close attention, you can see me actually drawing a straight line from one side to the other to know exactly where the line is ending and starting. Again, if you're having a hard time doing that on your own without a ruler, feel free to use a ruler. And then just uh, draw. <laughs> just keep on to the reference. There isn't much to know here. We basically just want to thicken our lines a lot more than any other line, for multiple reasons. One, it's to draw the most attention to this. Again, the eyes are going to be our highlight. So we want the viewer, even if it's only yourself, to be drawn to this point by creating the biggest contrast. And also to simplify or stylize the eyelashes. Now, after you have the upper shape down, you're basically gonna just draw a little curved line along your guard line or the lower eyelid, and then draw two ellipses that are slightly outside of the eye. And once you have those eyes and they're looking symmetrical, as symmetrical as you can, there's no need to spread over perfection. Again, you won't achieve perfection. No one will ever. So there's no need to care about that. But once you're satisfied, move on to actually some more details. And those details are just gonna be some extra eyelashes. Again, to make our character seem even more feminine since eyelashes are, at least in today's society, often seen as something very feminine. Okay, now that we have our eyes done, you can see me do some more cleanup. Now again, especially in a style like anime, I do think cleaning up is very important because if you don't have sharp lines, and in case you don't know what sharp lines is, it's basically the difference between a line like this and this. And I don't think you need to be an art pro to see the difference here. And especially in anime, such a style where one line is gonna be an entire eyebrow or one line is gonna be an entire mouth. Those lines should be somewhat accurate. That's why you're using so many guidelines. Just 
just have fun. This is going to be the most important thing, especially at the beginning. And you can see me fix the eyebrows, because after all, I think they looked a little bit too sad. And you can see me draw in the iris. And here again, you also can see me draw that straight line, which is just going to help me to make sure that the irises are symmetrical and have the same size. And now, what you can see me do right here, is draw over all our lines, our finished lines. This is just gonna help us, again, as I said, clean up our entire piece, which is gonna help us artists to differentiate because, between guideline and finished line. After all, our guidelines aren't gonna be there for much longer, since after we're done going after every finished line or every final line, we're gonna erase them. You can really take your sweet time with this part. Those lines should be crisp and sharp, as you said earlier. They're not going to be perfect on the first try. Just feel free to erase it and try again. And something that you might have saw me do earlier, especially with long lines, is holding the pencil really, really far back. Now, I'm not just doing this because I'm holding my pencil weird because I'm I don't know that strange weirdo but actually I'm doing this for a very good reason it is to keep my distance from the page which is something very important which you're gonna have to learn at the beginning at some point you're gonna be really absorbed in a pain uh, in the drawing process and gets a kind of tunnel vision which isn't always a good thing because you probably will get cut up in detail and fail to see the entire picture. And especially then, it becomes really painful to erase something because you already invested so much time in this detailed area, but it doesn't fit to the rest whatsoever. So you either live with this mistake or have to do it all over again. Trust me, I didn't always use the second to <laughs> Now, after we've drawn those our lines thick, our fine lines, we're gonna add a bit more detail to our ears. Not too much, very simplified. That's it. Then, we're gonna erase our guidelines. A uh, quick note, I fucked up the order a little bit while recording. I started with the values, which you're gonna learn what that is in a few seconds. and. Only after I started with it, I actually erased the guidelines. So just ignore those strange lines around the eyes. They're gonna be explained in a second. This is the step we've been waiting for. This is one of our final cleanup steps. At the very, very end, we're gonna do it one more time, but this is gonna be uh, one of the most important things because this is where you really can see if those outlines or final lines as I call them up, to, up until now are really holding their own and you might really have a hard time to erase those guidelines they might not go away that easily 
which is normal because you're probably not gonna have those finesse and those fine lines. This is something that comes with practice. So it might not look that clean, but that's fine. Trust me, I might not see your drawing, but if you stayed up until this point, I'm sure that it looks already great. And now we're gonna do one of the final and most important touches. One of the few touches that are really gonna bring our paintings to life. And this is value. But basically, it's a fancy word for light and shadows. And again, we're gonna keep it very, very simple. And we're not gonna use any smudging or anything like that. We're simply gonna add some shadows below our eyebrows, above our nose, below our lips. Another important shadow is the shadow right below our chin, casting upon our pencil neck. And now it's time for some love for our drawing's highlight, the eyes. As you can see me here, or as I'm sure you've seen many, many times, are that anime eyes hardly look like real eyes. It's one of the most stylized things about anime, but also one of the staples. So there isn't much you can do actually wrong with it. And there aren't any rules. So it's more of a feel thing. However, there is a few things that we can do with values that are nearly always the case. And it is the shadow from our upper eyelid. Okay, no, don't worry, the eyes are not gonna stay like that. However, sometimes it might be great to work on another area. Again, do not get tunnel vision on this one thing. So we're gonna add the blush now. <laughs> and to get a general idea where the blush is, it's a surprise, surprise on the cheeks. And if you're not entirely sure if the area is correct, feel free to use very light circles. Trust me, those circles are very light. So light indeed, that you can't even see where you use them, did you? But if they're not that light, don't worry. Again, it's a practice. And now, we're gonna, again, make our eyes a bit darker. Now, why do you want to make the eyes darker, actually? That's fairly simple. It's simply to create more contrast. Black and white is a strong contrast, and our eyes are always drawn to contrast. So, we're gonna make our eyes darker, especially compared to the rest of it, to, again, have us focus on that. Now you can also see me do some more shadows on the ears, around our hair, under our hair bangs, which might as well also multifunction as hair strands on the back side of our hair, and just play around some strengths. Now, we don't want to go too heavy here, which is quite the advantage of a pencil, in opposed to a liner, because you can actually de decide on how strong a line is supposed to be, by how lightly or how strong if we press while drawing said line. So, despite having basically using the same technique and the same pencil, we can get two very different results, which are resulting in a more subtle or more aggressive and attention demanding result. Again, this is simply, this step is simply gonna help us to, first of all, polish our art 
work a little bit and make sure the art the viewer is drawn to the point we want to. You don't need to get the entire fury behind this. This is something that's quite advanced actually, but I do think it's good if I explain it to you. So that once you actually decide that this is the road you want to go to, like that you actually want to focus on art, you at least have heard it. And now again you can see me go after those eyelids to create more contrast.
another little trick to polish our artwork. Now, you could stop here after those eyebrows, but we're gonna make another little trick to polish it even further. And that's gonna be making our outline thicker. Now here you can really press hard with your pencil and just go around the outline, the outer outline of our drawings. Basically around the shape of our hair, the most outer lines to separate our drawing from the piece of paper or the background, which is in our case, a simple piece of paper. Again, here it's also really important to draw it in one fluid line. And here, to elevate our ribbon a bit from our hair, I decided to give the ribbon one layer of our trusty cross hatching. And that's it. Congratulations! It didn't sound like clapping at all. Congratulations! You did it! It made your very first face in anime style. I'm proud of you. And as I said, if it doesn't look like mine, don't worry. It's practice over practice in this. There's no talent whatsoever. I hope this was fun to you. And I hope that maybe you will continue to draw. And if it isn't anything for you, at least you can now really say you gave it your all. But if you now say you really do enjoy art and you now want to know the fastest way to improve your art, then watch this video where I'm gonna tell you a fail-safe way to improve your art.